is God is doing a new thing. Amen. Is there anybody in here who's tired of the old stuff? Can I just get a raise of hands? I'm very interactive because what happens is sometimes we need to be pulled out. So I'm going to give you a little bit of uncomfortability. Is that okay? So is there anybody who's tired of the old? Anybody looking for a new thing even today? I'm talking healings. I'm talking deliverance in when it comes to work, even ministry. And I can see that a lot of us need this. So, when we talk about God is doing a new thing, I assume we're talking about Isaiah 43, verse 19. Amen? And that says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Shall you not know it? It means, do you see it? What God is saying is, behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth as in it will be so mighty. But the trouble is some of us won't see it. Can I be honest in here today? God does the new thing. And sometimes we miss it based on our vision. Because what happens is we let our flesh take over sometimes where we feel as if God needs to understand me and I don't need to understand him. One of the examples I have is when Samson, well in, 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 in Judges, Samson was in the Bible and, and he, he was looked at kind of funny for the whole of my life, if I'm being honest, before, for his weakness. But then on my reading, I then saw that the mother and father did not know that it was of the Lord seeking an occasion. But if you are carnal, you will look at him and say, nah, Samson, man, you're wicked, man. Samson, all you know is woman, 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 woman. By the way, I'm not telling everybody to go and <laughs> go and just love woman, woman. It's not like that. But what happens is sometimes God confuses our sense so that faith can come through. Because the truth is, if you can make sense of it, you do not need faith. If you can make sense of the, the, the magnitude, then it's not God. What happens is, we look at God as if he is inadequate, like his blessing is not enough. It says, bring, bring the tithes into the storehouse. Amen. And then he says, prove me now. And see if I do not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. I know the scripture, it says, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. It doesn't say blessings. So what happens is we need to un get rid of the idea that God's blessing is not enough. What happens is his blessing arrived, we just didn't see it. Because his blessing was wrapped up in an issue at work that we haven't overcome yet. So it looks like a cycle. But because we haven't overcome it, you haven't seen God yet. Because what happens is we, we boil God down to our own mindset and expect him to do something exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or imagine. But the trouble is, that is all according to the power that works in you. Here's a few things that will stop you from seeing what God is doing. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going somewhere. Now, one of the main things that block our vision is lack of prayer. Now, I'm a, I'm a young guy, I would like to say. I'm 27. I'm young. Yeah, yeah, I'm still young, I'm still young. I'm not going to lie, the other day my back was kind of feeling a certain way. And I said, the devil is a liar, not yet today. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you, 
Not saying, not, not old people, but you know, I see my nan do it sometimes. You know, you just sit there, you start rubbing your knee. Oh, Jesus. And after a long day at work, you come in. Lord, thank you, Lord. You is good. When I hear myself say, all I can think of is my nan. <laughs> Lack of prayer. Jesus said to the people who were selling stuff in the temple. It is written, my house, hear me, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Now everybody knows our parents have non-negotiables in their house. For example, don't bother come in my house and even think to keep your shoes on. Because my mom looks after that carpet very well. Don't go to my nan's house and think that you can just drop your clothes anywhere. I've tried it. And you don't want to know what follows after. <laughs> There's non-negotiables in our human houses. So what is happening here is that this. What Jesus is saying is to stay in the presence of his house. He has a rule and that rule is pray. It says my house shall be a house of prayer. And that's another thing that blocks us because what happens is sometimes we believe that God should come off his throne and meet us. But if he's stationed in a house, let's say, for example, how will you see him? Do you not enter his house? So when you get into his house, how you stay there, you pray. Now what happens is sometimes we don't feel like praying. I don't feel like praying most days. Can I be honest? Is that okay? I don't feel like praying most days. But what happens, there's a need. And there's a must. I like that. Because we need to understand, if you think for one second you've come on this earth just for yourself, you're selfish, man. But then what happens is you want everybody to think outside of themselves for you. We go into prayer, God, I want this, God, I want that. Have you ever, let me tell you the worst thing I've ever done is go into prayer and ask God, what do you want? Aye, aye, aye. Because when the truth comes back, it hurts. The first thing God said to me, don't you dare go on that porn website. Ah. And <laughs> here's the trouble. I'm speaking in honesty. Because what happens is sometimes we have doubters in the house, church. We have our own Thomases in the house. But even Thomas needed to see the scars of Jesus to understand are you hearing me? To understand that he is real. So I'm showing you all my scars because I don't business. Because there's a need and there's a must. The first thing he said to me, don't you dare go on a porn website. Ah, and my head was hurting me. Because I was in the room by myself. Understanding that, that it wasn't even my thought at the time. But because he said it, I'm thinking I probably would have gone on that. And then God dealt with me bit by bit. But it all started with a prayer that I prayed. God, what do you want from me this time? What is your will for my life? And that's how I learned how to pray. And the benefit, I don't know if there's any real old school Pentecostals in here. That when it comes time to pray in tongues, we don't hold back. <laughs> but what happens is sometimes our controlling nature wants to know what the Holy Spirit says. But if you was to hear the Holy Spirit saying, kill his flesh, Jesus. Kill him, take away his car. Take away their clothes. Take away so he can shine through. You, won't, you don't want to hear that. So when I enter my prayer closet, I, I think more to pray in the Holy Spirit. Reason being is because I trust him more than I trust myself. I don't need to know what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Bible talks about tra um, interpreting, not translating. Amen? So that's one of the main reasons why we don't see the vision of God. Another one is fear. My goodness. Fear will grip you. 
and make you feel like you can't do anything to the point where you just don't do anything. Fear will grip you and tell you everything opposite to what the word of God says. And then we, we sit in it because it feels better than the uncomfortability of stepping out. I'm not pushing anyone to step out to do anything that they don't feel that they're called to do. But I'm just saying that sometimes in the faith, we need to make the step first and realize that God is responsive. Draw nigh to me first and then I'll draw nigh to you. He doesn't say I'll draw nigh to you and then you come to me. Fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Meaning, fear works in direct opposite, or in other words, in hindrance to his power. But then the trouble is this. We like the scripture. God can do exceedingly abundantly and I always hear it yay everybody shouts after you know how it goes <laughs> God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think but then we don't like the next part because if you realize that God works according to the power that works in you it gives you a job to do and we're just lazy we hear scriptures like I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me but then we say Lord you do it can we be honest in here? These are the things that we do. I do it. <laughs> I say, Lord, man, you just, you go and deal with them, a car. I can't be bothered. But he's given me the capacity to do it. Now, you have to know your God. If you don't know Jesus, can I just be real? This is my revelation. If you do not know Jesus Christ, you're finished. And that's as real as it actually gets. Because what happens is you might think that you're doing well. Ay, 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 the devil is wicked, you know. I thought I was doing well when I was out there singing all type of song, meeting all type of people, doing all type of nonsense. And I thought, look how God is blessing me. I'm not saying the blessing didn't come from God. But I'm saying that he proved to me that I couldn't handle it without him. The trouble is, when I said, all right, Christ, I'm ready, I thought I was going to keep everything I had. I lost it all. <laughs> you have never seen a hundred thousand pounds go missing from your account that quick in your life. And then, I have to then sit here and say, Lord, I still love you. Sorry, excuse me. If you knew, <laughs> in my room, I said, Jesus, this is unfair. I came to you and you made me lose my money. <laughs> but then what happens is I realized something that no man can have two masters. You either serve God or mammon, which meaning that God even realizes that there's a weight on money. God even realizes that there's a weight on money, acknowledging that money can also be a God. Ay, ay, ay. It's the only thing that God calls close to him, knowing the influence it has on us. I knew I was serving money because when money went, I was upset. If you realize that Christ loved you first and you love him back quickly, you will save yourself the trouble of losing everything because he wants you to realize that it is because of him why you are still alive. In fact, how many near miss crashes? I'm, I'm not talking to somebody. How many near miss that we, that, we, that we almost hit? And then we realize, hold on, I could have, but I didn't. I should have even, but I didn't. <laughs> Knowing that I wouldn't be able to stand in front of his face because of what I did last night, can I be real? These are the things that was happening to me as I was coming closer to Christ. The powerful thing is when Peter had the encounter with Jesus and they went fishing, when he saw the power of God, Peter fell down. Peter fell down on his face saying, get away from me. Because what happens is when we start noticing that God is here, we kind of reject him. But the good thing is at least you know you're coming close. Can I help somebody today? You ever felt like you're rejecting God? 
it means that he's coming close. Because I was, it, it shows our, our nasty. It reveals our nasty. But then the good thing is that there is a blood that purifies my God. There is a blood that purifies that, that even now it still speaks. Are you here? Blood speaks. You know that blood speaks because in Genesis, when Abel was killed, God said, I heard the voice of Abel crying in his blood. What? Wait, where? How can you hear blood crying? Now then that gives me a new way of life that I need to sort out my bloodline. Why do you think that you are the one that's going to break the generational curse? Because we have to fix some conversations in our blood. Are you hearing me? Yes, I know it's hard. Yes, I know that sometimes you just want to give up. But for the sake of your bloodline, push forward because you do not like what you're going through. Why pass it down? Tell the person next to you we're going somewhere. Now, Romans 8, 14 and 15 says this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again. Let me explain that to you. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Meaning that as soon as you come to Christ in salvation, you're actually free from fear. You just have to know it. If you don't know that you're free from fear, you will act as if you are not. These are free gifts. Now what happens when we want something from God and then God gives it to us and all he, you have to deposit is faith but faith without works is dead. I repeat, faith without works is dead. You can't have faith for something and not work as if it's already done. Church, there's a, there's a, there's a place where we might want the healing to happen, but have you got the faith for it? Have you got the faith to see something that ain't there? That if somebody is limping, you don't even see them limping. Tell them, my goodness, I see you walking straight in the mighty name of Jesus. That you don't need to rain down a whole heap of prayer. But when you know that you know that you know who God is, you understand this has nothing to do with me. has nothing to do with my ability, but the Holy Spirit's power that works within me. Listen to this. The same spirit that raised Christ from the... Nah, nah, I feel kind of gangster when I say it. I mean, do it again. The same spirit ay, 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 that raised Christ from the dead lit up. <laughs> Meaning, I'm not a normal youth. <laughs> My young people, you understand me? You're not a normal youth. You are a spirit having a human experience. When you train your thoughts and you grab those stupid thoughts that the devil tries to tell you, you're never going to be anything. And we, we know God. Why would God ever say you'll never be anything? But where did you hear it from? Meaning that not all thoughts come from your head. Because the Bible says casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself above the what? knowledge of God. And as I said, you have to know, God, don't think you can skip the steps. Now, I'll give you something else. The fear that crippled you from moving is literally the fear of the unknown and the unseen, but God is the only one who should be feared in the place of the unseen. If you fear the idea of something happening that has never happened, you are letting God know, God, I trust this more than you. Are you hearing me, church? And how do you overcome the fear then? Because I haven't come to haggle you. I've come to free 
the mindset that the devil tries to impose on us and his de demonic doctrines. How do we get rid of this idea of fear? It's faith. It's power and love. There's a lot of times when I thought something was going to happen. And a lot of times when I've had ideas of something happening and it made me feel strange. Now, understanding the voice of God, he then told me, Imran, go and speak to the person. I said, excuse me? I said, no, because they're just going to, and then he shushed me. <laughs> Sometimes we have to shut up when Jesus is talking. Listen, he said to me, go and speak to the person so I can prove to you where that thought came from so you understand my voice and his. Some of us want to, how do we know the voice of God? Have you tested any of the voices you're hearing? Oh, the voice of God told me not to chat to that person, but then a whole heap of war uprooted out of somewhere. And then we're like, where is the love of God? That's not Jesus. I've heard people say, live all say, oh, God told me not to chat to that person and told me to walk past them straight. What are you, what are you talking about? That means your capacity for love ends here. Let me help you. Look at this. The Bible says this in 1 John 4, 16 and 18. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Amen. God is love. Everyone repeat. God is love. Amen. And he who abides in love abides in God. <laughs> I know in it. <laughs> And God in him, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. If you, do you hear me? There is no fear in love. If you're still fearing ideas and things. Check your love statements. Check the way you love. Check your capacity to love. God is love. Jesus came to show us a new way that his most glorified state was not him bringing down the 10,000 angels, but was in him dying. Are you hearing me, church? And I haven't come to speak folly or just, these are things that have been tested and tried. I just newly got married. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. That's my wife over there, Annika. Hi. <laughs> now, in marriage, it is not easy. But what happens is we grow up, let me tell you the truth, we grow up watching Disney thinking that Disney is Disney. We think that Disney is God. And Disney is a wicked little liar. Now, when I see what Disney be doing to the perspectives of the people, what happens is they give you a knowledge that when you see another one, you think that God ain't there. But can I just give you something else? In Romans 8.18, 8, it says this. I love this one. It says, Consider not the sufferings of the present time to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. We say, Lord, bring your glory. And he gave you suffering. But you didn't know that suffering breaks down to the word in Hebrew. It breaks down to labor, which means a, th a few things. It means working hard, working extensively above your human rate. But then there's one more. It says, as you come to the last trimester, my God, as you get to the last trimester, it's birth time. Because what happens, the glory has to come out. So what happens is you're not suffering because of anything else apart from God has placed glory in you. We have to suffer. It's called long suffering. Don't let nobody fool you and boil it down to patience. Patience is nice. Patience is just nice. When you hear long suffering, you understand who Christ is because we have to suffer for who? Christ. It didn't say have patience because of Christ. Now, to rid of fear,
we have to understand that there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. And I said to God, I said, my love, I don't think my love can ever be perfect. And that's when he revealed it to me this morning. And he said, it's not yours, it's mine. You ever hear in relationships, oh, Christ at the center? Can I, let me get, let me get, let me get two people. Anyone who's bold, just two people. So I can just create an example. Amen. We got one. We got one. And we got two. Nice, 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 nice. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Blessings, blessings. So, check me. Now, I'm going to do this as a friendship, a friendship because there's too many here, yeah? <laughs> but Christ should be in the middle of all your relationships. Are you hearing me? Now, imagine these two are arguing. I just want you to start shouting at each other. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shout, just shout. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what happens is when Christ is in the middle, would you shout at Christ? Would you shout at Christ? So then automatically your perspective changes because of who you're looking at in the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Blessings, blessings, blessings. So what happens is your perspective changes because you're not no longer looking at man. You're looking at Christ. It will get hard. But what happens is as long as you don't displace as long as you don't display Satan, act as Christ. It's going to get hard, but just don't display Satan. Be angry and sin not. Hold it down, man. Hold it down for Christ and just wait. Pray on the inside. If you can't speak out loud, let the Holy Spirit who prays on our behalf with groans that cannot be uttered. There is a way to handle everything, but not knowing that even in that, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And then you come out the other side and the thing that I was scared of, I overcame just because I did it because Christ was in front of me. That is the evidence of when I look at his perfect love, I have to fix up, man. When I look at how Christ does things, I have to fix up. Because everything shall be tested by Your faith shall be tested by fire. I don't know if anyone's keeping time. How long have I got? <laughs> Someone let me know when you can. It's 120. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Now, I want to go a bit more into vision. Say, Lord, give me the spirit of revelation. That sounds like you don't want it. Say, Lord, give me the spirit of revelation. Amen. Now, can we turn to Exodus chapter 4? And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me. Have you ever not stepped into something because you thought what people were thinking? But did the people contact you and said, Hey, I'm not going to believe you? You just think they're not going to believe you? Who gave you that thought that was going to stop you? Knowing that God said go and something's making you not. Hear me? Behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, and who's telling Moses this? <laughs> it says, they will say, the Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. Now, we look at the staff as something glorious, amen? Amen. When you think, when I thought of the stuff, I thought, wow, what power, amazing. But then God showed me something. What's the next verse, please? And he said, cast it on the ground. Sorry. <laughs> Don't let that go over your head. God said, put it on the ground. And then, when he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. When you let go of you, the thing that you're holding on so tightly and you let it go, you'll find out that it's a snake. Has anybody ever had that? Well, you let go of a friendship that you was holding on so dear and then all of a sudden your business is going there, 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 everywhere. Because the things that we find comfort in might snake us. Are you hearing me, church? Next verse. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. God is telling him, don't be scared. Go and grab it. But why didn't God comfort him? Isn't God comforting? God cares more about your obedience than your emotions. It says this, and he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. Now, then it says, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. Ay, ay, ay. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, it was white as snow. It said nothing about the staff being in his hand. What Moses didn't catch on that God was trying to show him, I've placed something in you. God already knew what was in Moses' hand. But God always does this thing and he says to his servants, what do you see? Are you hearing me, church? He wants to know if you see well or do not. <laughs> Moses said, a staff. And I'm going to prove to you that God didn't want Moses to get comfortable with his staff. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the, um, the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Amen, amen, amen. Now, God tells Moses to take his rod in Exodus 17, yeah, and strike a rock so that water can come from it, so he can... Give to the children of Israel, yeah? But then, in Numbers 20, 11 to 12, it says this. He told him to do it a second time, but he says, Take the rod, you and your brother, gather the congregation together, speak. Are you hearing me? Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them. For them out of the rock and gives drink to the congregation and their animals. Now, in verse 11, Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and the water came out abundantly. So the effect was still the same. It still worked. Don't get it twisted, it still worked. But the issue was this. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, this is verse 12. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. They missed the promised land because they didn't hearken unto the voice of God. What happened is Moses got comfortable with the staff because it works. When God is doing a new thing, he might tell you, get rid of the thing that works. Have it still there. But I'm going to tell you to do something over that. Instead of you doing all the work with your hands, I'm giving you the ability now to speak to something. That when you speak to it, the life and the breath that comes from you is not yours but mine. Some of us need to speak to our relationships. Some of us need to speak to our jobs. I'm not talking cost them. I'm talking go to your job and say, you are a beautiful job. Now I know it may not be. But there's something in scripture that says this. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why would God make you lie? If you're weak, why would God tell you, say, I am strong? There is power in I am. Now, one of the names of God that God gave to Moses, in fact, is I am that I am. Meaning that there is power where I am, I, this is who I am. It means that everything will work because I am. So when it says that the weak say, I am strong, it's saying you have to have a knowledge of God to say this. Otherwise, you'll be lying. So then, let the bad job, just go to the bad job and say, you are a good job. In the beginning, God brought animals to Adam. And Adam named them. But then Adam also named 
his wife. Be careful what you call the people in your life. Be careful what you name the things around you. Because a name is given to something that has personification. It's a person. Are you hearing me? Don't call nobody out of their name. Are you hearing me, church? Now, look at the person next to you and say, do not get comfortable. <laughs> look at the person behind you and say, don't get comfortable. Look at the person that's not really saying anything. Just give them a tap and say, hey, 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 don't get comfortable. <laughs> now, David says in Psalms 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It sounds good. It sounds good. But the truth is, is this, yeah? I don't think we've read that properly. It says the Lord has prepared, it, thou shalt prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Meaning the enemies came first. David just didn't move. It doesn't say thou hast prepared. It says thou shalt prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Some of us are running from the uncomfortable place. Hence, that's another reason why we do not see the new thing that God is doing. We're so focused on the comfort table that we won't be able to sit at God's table. What table are you sitting on? I challenge you today. Do not sit on the comfort table. Are you hearing me, church? Now look at the person say to you and say, don't sit on your butt. You are probably thinking, what in the world is this young man saying? <laughs> I'm not talking about B-U-T-T. -T. I'm talking about B-U-T being the excuse of why God can't. We always say, uh, I want to do this, but I ain't got time. Stop lying. You have time. I have a statement that I live by, and it says this. In this life, you either make it happen or you don't. It's that simple. In this life, I repeat, you either make it happen or you don't. Because when you see the people and the wicked striving, you start saying, wow, look at them, but what are you doing? Go and watch their podcast. You'll find out they didn't just jump up out the blue and just randomly get stuff. These men are reading 100 books a, a, a month. <laughs> what knowledge are we consuming? It's, the Bible says this, with lack of knowledge, my people perish. Without knowledge, we perish. What are we doing for ourselves? Do not sit on your butt. Every minute, oh, I want to do something, but... Moses was like this with God and we actually see the character of God not really being impressed with people's lack of faith. Never once did God comfort anyone that didn't have lack of faith. He called it out. He said, oh, ye of little faith. Every minute he said, guys, what's wrong with you? Do you not have no faith? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. These are the scriptures that I don't like. <laughs> now, What happens is we then say stuff like, I have so much talent. There's so much people with potential. I have so much talent, but I don't want to step on any toes. Ay, 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 ay. All we say is, but this and but that. But where's the old Pentecostal, the Pentecostal church that say things like, it's not going to good church, but God. What happened to but God? Where are we? What happened to but God? Can I tell you the reason why I wasn't saying but God in the times where things were hard? I wasn't saying but God because I didn't know who God was. How can I say but God to something or someone that I don't know? And that's why I have patience with people that are in the world because they act as if they do not know Jesus Christ. What do you expect? And then what happens is you then get vexed with them. Oh, don't do this and don't. Do they know any better? That's why these prophets were able to say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. They don't know Jesus. You can't act like somebody who you are not around. 
Now, I say it to you again. Don't get comfortable. The beautiful thing about the word comfortable, and this is the only thing that is beautiful about the word comfortable, is that once you remove the comfort, you see the able of God. You miss me. Once you move the comfort, take that out. All that's left is able. Then you will see, oh, my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that. And now it's, it, it fits a bit different because you got rid of the things that are blocking the purpose of God. Who wants to see a new thing? Now, I noticed something very significant about, and I'm going to end on this, about Exodus chapter 4. If you kindly, can we go to verse, verse 9. Now, in verse 9, sorry, in verse 9, God says, and it shall come to pass, God gave two signs for them to do. For Moses to do, sorry. But then there was one more. <laughs> God says this. He's basically saying, if those two fail, just do this one. Now, the thing I found different about this one, it wasn't like boisterously powerful. And it had nothing to do with Moses' body or what he was holding. Ay, 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 ay. Say to the person next to you, we're going somewhere. Listen to this. It says, and it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, hear me, and pour out upon the dry land, <laughs> and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Then we go over to John 19, verse 33. I want you to see it for yourself. But when they came to Jesus, this is at the crucifixion, amen? When they came to Jesus and they saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But listen to this. But one of the soldiers mm -mm -mm, with a spear pierced his side and forth with came there out blood and water. God was showing us that even in those times, Jesus, the significance of what Jesus was doing was even there in those times. Even in the scripture that we're reading today, he's still there now. I'll explain it like this. And this is in conclusion. It says this, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, same word, all things have become new. This has more to do, sorry, I'm baking. This has more to do with Christ than anything else. I'll go forth. It then says this, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness, amen, and rivers in the desert, a road in the wilderness. Jesus says, I am the way. <laughs> Are you hearing me? The rivers in the desert, in John 7, 38, he says this, he who believes in me, mm -mm -mm, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers. You didn't know that the rivers were going to come from you. You want God to do the new thing, but can I tell you the truth? Christ done it already. Now the river shall flow out of you. And then it goes on to say this, the beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Amen? Here's the scripture, it says this, but ye are a chosen generation, ay, 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 ay. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. 
and in First Peter it says this. First Peter chapter two verse nine. That ye shall show, ye shall sh you should show forth the praises of Him. Are you hearing me? Who have called you out of the darkness into marvelous light? If you want to see this new thing that God is doing, seek Christ like never before. I can't stress it enough. Because what happens is, the devil will trick you and make you think that you can do it yourself. We're too carnal for that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that we beg and long for will be added unto you. Not earned, just added. Jesus done it for us all. And the new thing that we are seeking and serving and begging for is more in Jesus Christ than in the world. Only the way of Christ, the truth of Christ and understanding the life of Christ, we shall thrive in this life as Christians. Are you hearing me, church? Um, so I'm coming from... Uh, a household where we love God and that meant nothing in the grip of the enemy. <laughs> Not because of God, but because of me. Um, I also lost my way and the trouble is that I found myself in my lost way. I don't know if that makes sense. So where I was going wrong, that's where I found my identity in the world. And there was a day that I was coming from studio and... Everything was fine, like, I had money. There was girls, not girl, no, no, no. girls. Uh, so I, I wasn't running out of conversation. Um, I might not have been brave enough to do what all the men were doing, but you know what I mean? I, I, I was talking to a lot of people. I had a lot of people around me and still felt like I was by myself. Now, there was a day where I felt inadequate, and straight away I forgot who I was because I didn't actually know who I was in Christ. And... Long story short, I went to a bridge and I was at the bridge and I put my leg over. And when my leg touched the rim of the, 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 the barrier, I'm talking like this was, a, this was a four. There was no way I was going to stay alive. In fact, two months after, one, one, of my, one of my friends that lived across the road from me, he did it. Then it let me understand that, my goodness, I'm not, I'm not lucky. But God really looked out for me, you get me? That could have been me. And I put my leg on top and then my phone started ringing. I've never had my phone on such level of vibrate in my whole entire life. In fact, I miss my phone vibration all the time. But this time, it rang through my whole system. It was like my spirit was also moved. And I picked up my phone and I realized it was my mom that was calling me. Now, I took my thing off because in my head I'm thinking, I'm not far from my home or my house. What if she saw me? So I said, hello. And my mom said, Im, you okay? I said, yeah, 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 I'm okay. She said, Im, no, 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 no. My spirit isn't resting. Ay, 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 ay. She said, my spirit isn't resting. Im, you're not okay. Come home. And in essence, I didn't come to Christ and then die. That day I already died, church. <laughs> I made up in my mind that I'm dead here. I didn't do no, oh, he got hugger, go and tell everyone, make everyone feel sorry. I went on my own accord. Nobody knew what was going on. So then that meant to me, somebody saw me. Somebody saw me in my despair and cared about me when I thought that no one cared about me. And that's why I will never let go of Jesus because the day when I almost let go of this world, he held me. Yeah. Lord, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you what you've done here. Lord, I pray that you will plant seeds in the people. I pray that you will give them 
a birthing of glory, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that wheresoever the blockage is, that you will reveal it to them in love. Let them understand your love. Let them understand that there is nothing that can separate you from, uh, separate us from the love of Christ. And now, Lord, I pray that wherever the missing link was back when they was younger, Lord, we crush it in the mighty name of Jesus. We step on trauma today in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall act accordingly because of you. Lord, help us to come into this new relationship so we can receive our new thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you. We thank you for them. Thank you for the young people today, God. You brought them into this house not just by chance, not by mistake. You have ordained this day before the foundation of the earth. And oh God, thank you for ministering. You're doing a new thing. And, oh, God, you said even now it's going to spring forth. So, God, we are claiming each and every one of them for you. Some have indicated by the raising of their hands that they want to know you today as personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And, God, you said in your word, amen, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. And, behold, all things are become new. So, God, we are asking you in your name that you will save to the utmost. Convict today. Give them no peace, no rest. Anyone in this house that does not know you as personal Lord and Savior, we are praying, oh God, that you will, you will, oh God, arrest them today. God, you said in your word, amen, that the Father draws them. Amen. No one can come except the Father draws them. So God, you have drawn them into your house. And oh God, you are drawing them by your Holy Spirit to surrender. Hallelujah. And God, we are praying that this will be the day that they yield completely to God. Hallelujah. And oh Oh God, that you will save, sanctify, and fill them with your Holy Spirit. Oh God, you're raising up men and women, and you're promising these last days to pour out of your Spirit upon all flesh. So God, oh, pour your Spirit, we pray. And oh God, raise them up to be mighty men and women of valor, women of purpose. Amen. Men of destiny. In the name of Jesus, that they will arise and shine. For the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon them. May Make them powerful in this season. Make them different, oh God. Let them stand out in their colleges. Stand out in their university. Stand out in their schools. Stand out in their communities. Stand out everywhere they go. That somebody will know that there is something different about these young people today. Arise for them, God. Show yourself strong. Every plot of the enemy for their lives, we cancel it. We nullify it. We subdue it. We send it back to the pit of hell. And we declare over their lives that they shall be blessed. They shall be highly faithful. But they will be the head and not the tail. And they will serve you, God. From this they reclaim every one of them for you. That they will stand out. And they will be what you want them to be. And the program and the plans and the schemes of the enemies for their life will be brought to naught. In Jesus' name, we say amen and amen. Somebody give God praise in the house today. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.